Hello and welcome to the next video in the hardware portion of our FTC YouTube series, created and hosted by Team Ultra 10539. Today's video will be about the many intake systems that teams commonly use in FTC. You'll probably be using one of these systems every year, um, because when presented with a year's challenge, the first question that you probably should ask is how you should uh, pick up the, the blocks or the items from the field. Um, an intake is probably always the most effective way of doing this, um, even if a claw seems simpler. Um, in my six years competing, it never has a claw design outperformed an intake design. Therefore, when designing your robot, if you can find a way to include an intake, your robot will likely perform better. With any intake, the components are the platform that the objects actually are intaked into, the wheels are the mechanism that actually pulls the uh, parts into the robot, um, and the, um, the ramp that directs the uh, objects as they pass through the intake. Um, the most difficult part of the intake is actually the, the edge of the, the ramp where the objects are transferred from the ground onto the actual ramp. Um, this is particularly difficult because especially for objects that slide, it's where the things often get stuck. For rolling objects, this is usually easier, but this is something that you'll have to definitely consider when you're designing your intake. For the mechanisms that actually pull the uh, objects into the robot, there are many options. Our team has successfully used many kinds of uh, intake over the years, including intakes that use rubber noodles like this, zip ties, rubber bands, and like this, and these green wheels from Andy Mark. The noodle or the zip tie intake is very effective when balls or other rolling objects are the main game element, as the objects generally only need a simple push to enter the mechanism and go over the lip at the edge of the intake. This makes them very, very fast and effective. The rubber noodle intake was, uh, off, uh, was also successfully used often by many teams in first rescue when which there were both uh, the blocks like these and the balls, uh, the white balls that are 2.75 inches in diameter. Um, if they are placed far enough from the ground, these noodle intakes uh, can also roll these cubes, so um, this can be pretty effective for uh, situations like that. Um, rubber bands stretch over a sprocket like this are also a very effective intake. This kind of intake performs very very well for objects uh, in which the size of the objects is variable. So for example, with these cubes, if you want to have them roll a little bit, this kind of uh, intake is very effective because um, it can deal with the corners of the cubes very effectively. The green wheels from uh, Anymark are probably some of the best parts to use for an intake um, as they are quite flexible, so objects can enter um, at an imperfect angle and then be straightened out by the wheels. We had this in our Skystone robot here, as well as um, on our uh, robot for um, ultimate goal, in which these wheels were able to straighten out the rings as they entered our robot. The larger wheels are very effective as their larger size means that the uh, the outer these larger wheels here are much more are very effective for our intake here because their outer their larger radius means that they push the rings faster into our storage mechanism. The smaller wheels here offer more torque as the um, as the force exerted on the rings as they pass through here must be greater in order to start them moving up the ramp. Um, we found uh, use for these wheels both um, in this configuration where they are in the top down configuration as well as when they are on the side. Um, in Skystone we also use our we also angled the wheels up a little bit such that they would pull the uh, blocks off of the field directly into our uh, storage mechanism very quickly. This eliminated the problem of the ramp and the lip as the wheels were close enough together to support the weight of the block entirely out of friction. This was the major advantage of these wheels. They are really, really sticky, so they can hold things objects, uh, hold the objects very, very well. The ramp itself is probably the easiest part of the whole intake. For this part, make sure that you uh, choose a surface the object slides very well on. So for this year in particular, these foam rings slide very, very well on sheet metal and cardboard. Um, so that's why we chose to use our intake out of sheet metal, such that they would slide very easily over it. If you choose a sticky uh, surface, um, for example, plastic did not work very well for this year's uh, competition. So just make sure that you're choosing the correct kind of surface so that the objects don't get stuck. Um, also make sure to allow, allow a lot of space at the opening of your ramp, such that the uh, objects, the game elements, can enter at sort of any angle. They could be entering from here, they could be entering directly straight ahead, they could be entering from this side. Make sure to leave it extra wide to so make sure that their rings don't have to be aligned perfectly to fit, as this will um, speed up the process of intaking during your uh, time in Teleop. Doing this correctly is probably the biggest advantage of an intake. Where a claw will need to be aligned perfectly, a good in intake simply needs to come into contact with an object, regardless of its orientation, and be able to pull it in. This saves a massive amount of time during teleop. 
So overall, with, for an effective intake, it should be able to deal with the game elements in any orientation, straighten them to fit into the robot's mechanism using the rampant intake elements. It then must also be able to make sure the objects do not get stuck, but using a proper surface on which the intake, the objects, uh, on which the objects can slide inside of the intake. The lip of the surface must be for sliding objects as thin as possible. In our case, for this particular robot, just a thin piece of sheet metal. Um, and for rolling objects, this doesn't really matter as much. You can make it a little bit larger. So I hope this helped you understand how to design your intake for your robot. If you have any questions or would like more help, please reach out to us at ultraredbrowning.edu or leave your question in the comments below. Thank you for watching.